recording. I am working with some students in office hours. Got a really good question about can we do some more examples about uh, acid base equilibria? And I went sure, but let's record it and we'll post this in a little supplementary video. Okay. Uh, so with that in word, let's let's do it. So I'm going to give a couple of examples. Um, let's look at. example like this. And um, sorry. So we could have a question where I'm basically asking what which way does the equilibrium lie here? Is this a, a, a worthwhile example, Alyssa, or is this too obvious? Yeah, yeah, that's good. OK, so. I think in a lot of cases, the first thing to do is just always practice your arrow drawing because why the hell not? Um, I'm going to draw a little bond here. So we're going to draw the arrows from. The electrons to the hydrogen, and then we're going to break the OH bond and put the electrons onto the oxygen. And this is how we go from the left to the right. Then when we're determining which way these work, we need to look at the charged species. So ignore the uncharged species, like just ignore those, they don't matter, and compare the two charged species. So by inspection, uh, the first thing that should jump out of you is, hey, I've got a negative charge on carbon or a negative charge on oxygen. And atom is really important. So I'm getting excited about the whole idea of a negative charge on the oxygen, but you always need to consider the possibility of resonance. And if we think about resonance, go, oh shit, we have some resonance and this can complicate things. Because resonance always complicates things. Well, it simplifies things and then it complicates them. It's confusing. So we have two resin. We have a resonance structure, a good resonance structure for each of these. Uh, there is a third resonance structure for both of them where you can have three charges where I just move the break the double bond. I don't move the electrons in, but then I have three charges and three charges is not normally a competitive resonance structure. I'm really interested in resonance structures that only have one charge if that's possible. Those are always going to be the dominant contributors to the resonance hybrid. So this is kind of a description of where the charges are. On the left hand structure. If I look at these two resonance structures, let's just compare these two here. I've boxed. Which one do you think is the dominant contributor to the resonance hybrid? Which one's the more important one? Um, I would say probably the second one. Absolutely. Why? Just because there's more. Um, is it because of the resonance? Or like because that's well, the resonance. We're comparing structure, these two or? guys, right? We're comparing this and this, right? Right. So the the resonance has kind of been like they are the resonance structure, so we're comparing within the resonance. So it's not because okay. one of those is more resonance than the other. They both have the same amount of resonance because they're resonance structures of each other. But what makes the second resonance structure more stable than the first resonance structure? Look at where the charge is. Always look at where the charge is with that question. That's what the question means. Okay. Um, see, this is where I'm having issues. <laughs> Would I rather have a negative charge on oxygen or carbon? You'd rather have it on oxygen. It'll be more stable. Okay, why? Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's more electronegative. More in electronegative. The same row. Oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. Okay. They're about the same size, so size doesn't come into it. Oxygen and carbon are about the same size. 
So oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. Oxygen can stabilize negative charge better. It's happier with the extra electrons. Okay. It's got more yeah. protons, basically. So an extra electron when you've got eight protons isn't as big a deal as an extra electron when you've got six protons. Okay. So the ratio of your proton positivity is a bigger deal when you only got six. So oxygen is happier with the negative charge. So this is more stable. Okay, and if I look at these two guys on the other side, and ask the same question, which of these two resonance structures highlighted in red, top or bottom, is more stable? Um, well, since uh, nitrogen has, or I think they're in the same, they're not in the same row. I, they I are don't see they, they are in the same row. Okay, yeah. so you probably. Remember those boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. Okay, so you would you consider atom size? Uh, they're in the same row, so you don't consider atom size. The oh, other you size is about the same. Electronegativity, right? Yeah. Which one's more electronegative? Um, I want to say the first one, or like oxygen is more. Absolutely. Do you have a, You don't have a periodic table in front of you right now, do you? I do not, but I can pull. Okay, one that's out. fine. You're doing fine. Uh, if you you're you're fully allowed to have a periodic table in front of you when you're answering these questions, right? So you. I, I've confused oxygen and nitrogen before on a periodic table, um, so that's okay. That's why people write down periodic tables. So, uh, more stable, absolutely. And it's the same argument. Oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen. It's the same argument there. Okay, now, what we basically want to do is we want to say which, of, which side of this equation is more stable. And what I'm going to say is that well, in if, again, look at the charged species. Our charged species here, we have a negative charge on oxygen for our most stable one and a negative charge on oxygen. Um, those more or less cancel each other out. If right. we can find another difference, so let's cancel those. So there would be the difference would probably be the nitrogen in the uh, 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 Car carboxyl group. Well, it's not. It's just a carbon. It's not a carboxyl. That's what I meant. Yes, Car perfect. <laughs> uh, so carbon ion. Um, yeah, it's, no, no, you're so, doing great. So which one do you think is more stable there, the nitrogen or the carbon? The nitrogen. Perfect, yeah, because it goes carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. Nitrogen is more electronegative. Right, okay. So it would it would be towards the right. Yeah. Okay. So what we're doing there, what, what all this, what, what we've done is we've kind of broken this down. But what we're doing is we're considering the fact that this negative charge here on the left is going to kind of be forced mostly onto the oxygen because the C minus kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. Whereas on the right, the N minus doesn't suck as bad. And so less of it's going to be forced on, less of the full negative charge is going to be forced on the oxygen. And we always want to distribute charge, right? Charge is always happiest when it's not in one place. And so if we can share more with the nitrogen, then we can share with the carbon, then we're more stable. Okay. Uh, and that's all resonance is about. That's all any of this is about is which, how can we spread the charge out more? Okay, let's do another example. So let's say we have. Can I ask a question about the one yeah. you just did? Absolutely. Okay. Um, give me one moment. I'm just like taking a look at something. Um. Okay, so for that example that you just did, do we, like, right off the bat, I tried to apply what we did in the class examples in which, like, the charge is on a carbon and oxygen initially, which are in the same row. So do we have to consider resonance, or can we right away just say that usually, like, electronegativity will win over resonance if there's, like, like similar number of resonance structures. It's not like one has one and the other one has five. Are we able to do that or should we? No, you have to look at the resonance structures because it was arbitrary which way I drew that first one. I could have drawn a top resonance structure. I could have drawn a bottom resonance structure. Because if instead I had drawn the, are they done in my office now? Mm -hmm. Are they done in my office now? Mm -hmm. Sorry, they were mopping my office, so I stole my student's office. Is there anyone in there? Okay, then I'm moving. Okay, I'm going back to my office now. I'll just, sorry, interrupt this for a second. Sorry? No, no, it's okay. I, no, I'll let you have your office back, Sanas. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, they put my carpet down on everything. This is awesome. OK, but if I had drawn, it was arbitrary which of those resonance structures I had drawn. I could have drawn the bottom resonance structure, the two bottom resonance structures. And if I had drawn the two bottom resonance structures there, and you mm -hmm. had used that logic, you would have said, oh, it lies to the left because there are charges on the oxygen, not the nitrogen. OK. So you need to think, if there is resonance possible, you need to do it. I'm just going to have to go get another thing from the other room. Okay. Yes. Sorry, just, I'll be available in 40 minutes. So. Yeah, so that's, so you do always need to consider resonance, and I'm sorry. No, I just wanted to double check because I, I had been following something else, so this clarifies it. Yeah, no, always, always like resonance might not be the defining factor, mm -hmm. but you don't know until you check. OK, are we supposed to like determine which is more stable and then compare those two? Uh, sorry, which is more stable and compare? Are we like, are we supposed to, when we draw out the resonances, are we always comparing the two that are most stable? Just comparing the two that are most stable. Like we did here? Um, yes, it's, I think you have to always consider the fact that, yes, like they're always going to dominate. It's just if they tie, mm -hmm. then you're going to have to look at the next one. Okay. So here was kind of largely a tie because the tie yeah. was between the two O minuses and they're very similar. Yeah. Uh, and then we broke the tie at the other resonance structure. Okay. Whereas if we weren't able to break the tie at the other resonance structure, like it was on the same atom, then we'd have to consider what other factors are coming into that. So maybe we'll do an example like that next, okay? Mm -hmm. I promise we'll do another, we'll do, you know what, screw it, I'll do this example right now. Um. So if we have this example. I we can draw the arrows like that. So here again, we can ignore the neutral species. You can always ignore the neutral species. That's always safe. Just don't, it, it all matters about how stable the charge is. That's all that matters. And so if we look at the two charge species, they both have resonance, but the resonance doesn't solve anything because they have the same resonance, right? Mm -hmm. Like in both, if you draw the resonance structures of both the left and the right one, you'll see that, okay, well, I got a resonance structure where I have the other negative charge is also on oxygen. So we don't differentiate. So would you consider induction? Do you agree with me, Alyssa, there? I do, I do agree with you. They're the same. They would just have different. I don't know if I'm muted or not. Can you guys hear me? You're not yeah. muted. We can hear you. Shit, I think my speakers are something, something's weird. Oh, sorry, I just turned my speakers off for no reason. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Plug that in. I think I can hear. It. Are you talking still? Um, now yeah. I am. Oh, OK, good, good. Yeah, I, I have no idea what the fuck happened. OK, <laughs> so technology. Not even this. So we can draw a resonance structure right like this. But these are tied. They're, they don't they don't give us any information really, right? Right. Uh, OK, so we check the resonance, always check the resonance, and it's like, OK, well, um, everything's on auction. There's no magical hidden resonance structures here. So There's, induction? Yeah, so induction. OK, so induction applies because what we have here with this resonance hybrid, right? I'm just going to draw for the one on the left here. It's the same thing for the one right. Is we kind of have, you know, O, O, 
dotted. Partial negative, partial negative, right? Yeah. And it looks at the one on the right looks the same except this is TF3. So then the question is, OK, how can we better delook? Which of these two, the one on the left or the right, better delocalizes the negative charge? Mm -hmm. So it would be the one that is the most electronegative. Right, it's going to be the one that pulls the hardest. Right. It's most so electronegative and closest. So induction has two things you need to think about. What is the most electronegative and what is closest? Okay. So I'm looking at this and going, the BRs, the three bromines and the three fluorines are equally distant, right? Yep. They're, they're one carbon away. Cool. So we don't need to worry about just keep track of that. It doesn't, because it's, it's not one or the other is more important. It's both are important. You need to weigh them, but that's a tie. So we don't even need to worry about distance. So now we just need to worry about strength. So which one's pulling harder? Uh, fluorine. Absolutely. Fluorine is more electronegative. It pulls like crazy. So although bromine is a larger atom and can stabilize a negative charge better, it doesn't pull as hard. So, so what I want to highlight here is fluorine is more like your, your, your logic is impeccable. Like you're absolutely right. Fluorine, more eneg than Br, pulls harder, delocalizes better. So be towards the right. Absolutely. Okay. Um, Talk about atom size, talk about induction. That's uh, another one kind of like this. Um, it's on my mind. Um, in the uh, in the textbook, I've been just doing a few examples, and it's it's showing like the difference in pKa's. Yeah. Is that also something that would be like a good consideration when we're doing these, or should we just stick to like? Resonance, atomic size. If you can find the pKa's of the of the molecules, that gives you the answer. But the pKa's are like the pKa is a measurement of the equilibrium. Like it right. basically tells you which way the arrow lies and by how much. Mm -hmm. um, but the reason the pKa's are what they are is because of resonance, atomic size, induction. Like these are the things that these are the underlying causes that drive a pKa. Right. Like why a PK is what it is, is because of these effects. So uh, because this is open book and if you can name the molecules and you can find the PKs for those molecules, that is not cheating. That is completely, that is using your resources properly. OK. Um, but and so the question was just which way does the equilibrium lie? Uh, and you looked up and you said, hey, the PK of this is this, and the PK of that is that, so it lies this way. That would be completely right. If the question was which way does the equilibrium y and explain why, then saying just because the pKs is different is not an explanation. Um, okay. That's like me saying which of these houses is more, why why is this house more expensive than that house? And you say, well, because it costs more. Like that doesn't explain what the underlying features are that make this house more expensive. Right. We like, wouldn't, we wouldn't have, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we wouldn't have any uh, questions just saying like, which way does it lie and no explanation? <laughs> Probably not. Um, that just isn't the way I, I think. But okay. if what you did, what you were able to look at the PKs, and you went, OK, I think it's this way, but I'm not sure. You looked at the PKs and went, OK, yes, it is that way. And then I'm just going to identify the like, the reason why and I'm going to run with that. That's fair. Okay. Um, so you can use it to check your work, for example. OK. Um, um, Sorry, I just had one additional question on that. I uh, so like which molecules would you be considering for pKa's? Like, would you consider the acid and the conjugate base, or the base and the conjugate acid? You consider the two acids. Okay. pKa's are a measure of how well an acid lets go of its proton. Right. Okay. The pK is the equilibrium between the acid and its conjugate base. So you okay. consider the pKa of this guy, and you consider the pKa of this guy, and whichever pKa is lower is the more acidic one. Right. Which means that the equilibrium lies away from it, because the more acidic one is going to protonate. It's want, the more acidic one wants to not be 
an acid. It wants to be the conjugate base. OK. Yeah. So you won't be able to find a PK of that. Yeah, I, that's that's one thing that I think that is the kicker. Like, I don't think we're going to be able to find specific molecules. Um, PK you will. Uh, oh, but, yeah? Yeah, yeah, a lot of them are available, but it will take you a lot longer to do that than it okay. will for you to work through the problem. OK. Yeah. Um, Just do it if I have time at the end. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's maybe better to be using during practice if you want, but I think for an evaluation. Um, like perfectly honestly, this is going. These are all open book evaluations, right? Mm -hmm. I. My goal, like you guys are sitting here in office hours, uh, you're obviously putting in the work. And what I want to make sure is that a student who puts in the work and does the evaluation fairly. Um, doesn't get the same grade as a student who doesn't put in the work and does not do the evaluation fairly. Because one of those people and might have the same answers, but one of those people has. Accomplished learning outcomes of the course and one of those people has not accomplished learning outcomes of the course. So the integrity of the evaluation is important. And so there's a few ways that we can, you know, if, if we're proctoring this in person, I'm happy to talk about this because this is all really relevant. If I'm proctoring this in person, it's pretty easy to. It's easy to catch the stupid cheaters. Mm -hmm. And most cheaters are stupid. So, you know, every year, you know, there's four or five people who fail the course because they cheated during a final exam because they, you know, wrote the answers on the inside of their water bottle or. Um, but I've seen like answers stuffed into baseball caps. Um, people used to try and put them into calculators, but that they stopped after a while. So that one's really easy. So it's just, yeah, um, I had one student write the answers on her thigh and she was wearing a short skirt. So, you know, you have like uh, just a cheat sheet on her thigh. It, it's really obvious when you're checking your thigh during an exam. So it's. That always happens uh, online, of course, it we're open book and I. I refuse to use proctoring software, which sort of says you have to keep your eyes on a screen or something like that's bullshit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just it's awful, so I need to write the exam such that. You know, they're highly randomized. Uh, everyone's exam is different, so you can't really get together with friends to do the exam. And if you try and get together enough people to do this, it will take you longer to get those people together and communicate than you have time to write the exam. Mm -hmm. So. The cost of cheating is just so high that you can't really get a good mark because you can't do it fast enough. Um, so what I'm, the, the goal here is try and make things challenging. Um, if you try and cheat, so the students who do the work get the grade. The students who try and cheat don't. Mm -hmm. I don't think that you're going to have an issue with that. <laughs> it seems like your questions are pretty, <laughs> you know, individualized. <laughs> oh, they are. And unique. Um, I, I still have and questions unique, that yeah. went up on Chegg from one exam a couple of years ago uh, when a lot when the exam went live, but I had put up fake questions like fake answers to them on Chegg. Before. <laughs> So that when people downloaded my fake answers, I knew that they had cheated on Chegg because there's no way you would have generated that answer any other way. So that was really, really easy because I had documented that I put it up on Chegg and everything. Oh so that was a lot of fun. So <laughs> I like fucking with cheaters. Um, <laughs> it, it, make, it brings joy to my my sad little jaded heart. <laughs> so anyways, uh, another example. Um, I don't know. You know what? Like once you've done a few of these, they don't actually get too too much harder. And so I can start throwing in some red herrings. I kind of gave it away by saying I'm throwing in some red herrings. <laughs> I'm not taking up mystery writing anytime soon. So again, you know, you can draw your arrows, boom. Uh, and then same question, which way is the equilibrium lie and why? So. Um, 
I don't know if you guys want to think about this for a minute. But I'm, I, uh, Alyssa, this is really up to you. So if you want to think okay. about it for a moment, then come back to me. Just give me one second. Take your time. So I think it would be kind of the same thing, like you'd have the same resonance structure. Somewhat. OK, so you draw the resonance structures, right? Have right. You? Yeah, so you'd have the one on the oxygen. Mm -hmm. And then you'd have the S one, yeah. Sulfur one. OK, so you'd have these two resonance structures, right? Right, yeah, so it's kind of the same thing. Are they the same? OK, OK. Well, so not what, the same thing, but like different molecules or like different atoms. Yeah. So what do you think? Would do you think? OK, but we also have an inductive effect here from the CF3, right? Right. OK. Are we what is? Which way does this lie and what does the inductive effect matter? Is that going to come into our consideration here? I don't think so because the the sulfur is pulling enough. Yeah, the resonance solves it. Like sulfur is so much better at stabilizing and is better at stabilizing a negative charge than oxygen. Right. Because it's lower. It's it's a it's down the column, right? So right. sulfur is not the same row. It's down. So sulfur stabilizes the negative charge better. Um, the oxygen's pretty good. Nitrogen's not as good as oxygen. So we've kind of dealt with it at the resonance form. The induction never came into it. OK, and in this case, the induction is actually working with it. We're saying this is the more stable one here on the right. And mm -hmm. of course, this would make it even more stable, right? Right. Um, but if what I put the CF3 on. You... Yeah, on the other side. Wouldn't matter. It wouldn't come into it because it would have been dealt with at the resonance. Yeah, it'd still be the same. Yeah, still wins. This is the, this case. It just it wouldn't get to that because you'd have so much more stability in here. And if this CF3 was right here on this carbon, uh, OK, may, maybe, may, maybe, maybe the left would win. Uh, I'm not going to give you a question that that is that um, where I'm unsure of the answer because it, you know, I'm trying to balance too many things. I'm throwing it in as a, a red herring where somebody goes, hey, induction, induction wins. Induction is less important than the nature of the atom. Unless it's like right next to it and really pulling, but it's not. It's it's a carbon away. We're safe. OK. Um, and I'm out of slides, so I will need to create some more slides. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Madison and Melissa joined us. I'm going to ask if they have some questions that they want to go over or more of the same. Um, yeah, I had a couple questions about some of the ring stuff that we were doing, but I can you can I'll I'll just pull it up for one moment. No, that's OK. Yeah, let's let's do it. Oh, you have you have OK. I can stop sharing so you can start sharing. Yeah. Um, Dr. Trent, do you have yeah. any like I know uh, Samra had mentioned something about Clayton. Uh, it's another textbook. OK, uh, I'm just sure. looking for like a mass amount of questions that I could practice. <laughs> um. OK, so what I recommend you do is type in organic chemistry into the Letty library. They probably have ebooks for a bunch of orga intro introductory organic chemistry. Uh, they probably have a bunch of ebooks for it and you can get them and you can get many more questions. So I'm, I'm actually going to do that right now and see what we've got. Uh, they also have hard copies, so if you rush down to Letty, you can beat everybody else and steal the copies. Okay. So they would also have the answers too, right? Yes, they would have the answers in a lot of the cases, yeah. OK, um, perfect. Like for some of the, they won't have it maybe for all the questions, so you check the answer key and see which ones they have. Uh, so I'm just going to check which books, books and ebooks. Just one textbooks. OK, I'm going to see if I can actually find some particular ones. I'll post them as resources if, I, if the university has. Um, shit, 
definitely has that as a hard copy. You know what? I um I can't. Of course, it would be completely wrong of me to tell you where on the internet to find these kinds of things for free. Um, but I can suggest a few textbooks that you might want to type in the textbook name plus PDF, and that might come up with useful. Sources. Okay. Uh, I'm just making sure I can find them. Ah, uh, Dan, that one got taken down. <laughs> okay, anyways, go on. Uh, go on, um, Malitza. Sorry, I was muted. OK, um, OK, so we did these Newman projections the other day and I was wondering uh, what do we do when we have more than three like substituents on in the system? Like I know we only dealt with three where we would find the best two that were the biggest and then from there that's how we solved it. But what if we had. Let me think. Um, Like, what if we, oh, I just realized there's a mistake. This shouldn't be there. But what if we had a CH3 ray, um, like, around somewhere here? How did we, how would we then, like, know where to put it? Always worry about the biggest ones. Get the biggest ones away from each other. Okay, so it this cyclic, one and this one? Yep. Yeah. It doesn't matter what else is on there. There could be no hydrogens. Like, everything is something. Get the two biggest ones away from each other. OK, and there's okay. only one way to do that. OK, if we had like a CH right here, would we want yep. to put it like across the F? We don't care about that. All we're worried about is the isopropyl and the isobutyl group. Get them away from each other. If the CH3 appears across from the F, great. If it appears next to the F, OK, but just worry about getting the two biggest ones across from each other. OK, all right, and then my other question would be um okay i think <laughs> for the drawing of the actual molecule i just need to check i don't know i was like reading it wrong and then i thought i was reading it right i need to check is this like the dip and this the the little flap up or is this the flap up and is this the dip well, the flap up is the top is just the top left hand carbon and the dip is the far right is the bottom right hand so carbon. Best. You're drawing just yeah, but you're drawing two carbons in each of those cases. So just just draw a circle around the top left hand carbon. Yeah, but you're still drawing around the entire bond. Oh. Yeah, just there. That guy's up. Because the other and then the bottom right is your bottom carbon. Okay. And the other four sure. carbons are all in the plane. OK, I wasn't sure if this. Oh, I wasn't sure if this was the bottom and top or if this it was can the bottom be. and top. It can uh, be either one because you can oh, rotate okay. this thing. Okay. And the wonderful thing about a chair is there's only two chairs. And so if you rotate it, any four of those, any carbon can be part mm -hmm. of the plane or not part of the plane. OK. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, like in here, we have those four middle carbons are all forming like a square. It's a tilted mm -hmm. square, but it's a square. Yeah. And two on the other sides are not. But if you look at this from a different angle, mm -hmm. any any two that are kind of across from each other are going. One's going to be up, one's going to be down, and the other four are going to form a square. That's okay. just it's it's the magic of chairs. Okay. Um, and then my other question was: when we're flipping the chairs, do we the way we know whether something will be up or down when we shift it like um, clockwise is that the axial still follow the same pattern of being up, down, up, down. So because this one was up here, that means this one has to be down and that's why we put yep. the flooring down. Yeah. OK. Axial um, positions always move from one up to up, down, up, down, up, down, all the way around. OK. 
And then when we did this molecule, the the cyclopentane, what was I wasn't sure like what was parallel and what was axial. This is really um, good. Yeah, nothing's axial on a cyclopentane. Oh. That's the problem with cyclopentane. They're both kind of not. Neither if you build the model and you look at it, mm -hmm. you'll see that neither's axial, neither's equatorial. They're both pseudo. Uh, okay. They're both midway between, um, and that's why we are not going to talk a lot about cyclopentane. Oh, okay. Okay, and then. Um. Okay. This I was trying to like. I drew something, and then I compared it to what you draw drew, and it looked different. So this is wrong, right? Or is it right? That is wrong because your 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 angle there mm -hmm. is all okay. Actually, both your things are drawn wrong. So consider where the axial should be. So Imagine like that two lines. Well, or, um, oh, you mean axial. yes, but you're. Yeah, but that your axial is wrong because you draw your axial. So let's just talk about the axial. Your axial is down, mm -hmm. but it, um, but it should be up. Like consider that you have like two, like you have a vertex coming towards it from those other two bonds, and they're kind of push the arrows pointing up at that carbon. Like the other two bonds coming to that carbon in the ring are kind of pointing up. We can make an arrow that points up. Where? That car, the top left hand carbon. So um, left. imagine the two. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Because you, you see the other two bonds come together, that like the the chair. It, it's an up point on the chair, mm -hmm. right? So the axial mm -hmm. is up. But you drew okay. your axial. That's right. And then yeah, exactly, perfect. Uh, and you can follow that rule around. So all your axials you've drawn are wrong. Oh. Um, your oh, equatorial. So you also can't try just... to draw the. So you can't just assign up downs. It has to be a no. specific up down. Build a model, okay. and it will be. And it hopefully, the hopefully building a model will do that. And you drew the equatorial parallel, but you drew it 180 degrees from the way it should be. It should be pointing away from the chair, but here it's kind of pointing back into the chair. Because in both cases, what you've drawn are not are not tetrahedra. Okay. I can't get a tetrahedron from the all any of the lines you've drawn. Are you talking uh, about should, this one? Any of the four. Yeah, that that one's perfect. That's good. Okay. That one's good. This one's bad. That one's bad. It should be the same as the one on the left. What about this one? That's good. Okay. Yeah, sorry, okay. that's good. But your axials are are wrong on those bottom ones. Okay. Because your axials should be vertically up. Okay. Okay. Uh, that I'm glad I found that out before Friday because I would have done it completely wrong. <laughs> um, For example, okay. uh, just, uh, I, I'm on LibGen right now, Library Genesis, and I find a whole lot of downloads of, I, I will list a couple of books that might be useful to people. Um, and then, some of these things. No. my last question would be, I was just thinking, like based on the last assignment, how you asked us to determine like, oh, which one's a valid resonance structure. Are there, do you have any tricks in determining which is a valid ring structure? Huh. What do you mean by that? Like if you gave us like, cause okay, the question sparked my interest because yesterday we did something, we did an example where, um, you basically gave us time to do it, and I had drawn this initially, but you drew something like this where these were flipped around. And at first, I had no idea whether if this was equal to what you like had drawn. Ah. Uh. But then, and then I was like, wait, like how do I know? And then, he, and then I thought, what if he asks, like, what if he just gives us a bunch of rings that are like technically equivalent, but one's not, and he asks us to find which one's not equivalent. Well, that that's that's evil and a really good question. So I'm probably going to do that now. Thank you. Um, uh, but here you're here. You heard it first. Um, so I think one thing to think about is number your atoms mm -hmm. like you've done there on the left. Number mm -hmm. the atoms in the other one and keep going clockwise or counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. Right. And if everything that is above is still above and everything that is below is still below. That's good. And it as long as like 
we can ring flip this. It's still the same chair. It's still well. It's, it's a different chair. It's still the same molecule. Yeah. Again, I'm going to going to pick on your drawing there a little bit, uh, Melitza, because your equatorial there again, they're the one on the on your left hand carbon with the one on the carbon with the fluorine. You have the hydrogen kind of you have you've drawn That's the right. Yeah, but now you need to draw it 180 degrees from there. It should be pointing out and away from the ring. Like this? Nope, nope, nope. Oh. Just directly across from it. Like continue the line, the, continue the the exact same. You drew the right parallel, mm -hmm. but you just drew it in a, you drew it to the right instead of to the left. So it should be like this. Nope. Oh. Continue drawing the same line along this exactly the same angle, just 180 degrees from it. You that the one you just drew me there was about 120. Uh, like that. Perfect. That would have been perfect because that is this, that, that's the right parallel. You drew the perfect parallel. You just drew it the wrong way. Okay. Again, if you're, I think you might want to start working with a model kit in front of you drawing just for a while and it'll just become, oh, I see it. Because right now I'm saying, hey, here's a rule and you're going, that's a stupid rule. And I agree with you. It's a stupid rule. Once you've seen it in three dimensions, you go, oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I get why he's doing it that way. But until I, until you see in three dimensions, it is really hard to do. Okay. So if you have get the model kit out and make these molecules. Okay. Same thing with your right hand carbon. Um, perfect. Yeah, that's in the OH is there, and not in the bond. And the, your right hand carbon, you just drew the wrong parallel. Like your bond there yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's supposed to be parallel like, to this, but I didn't. No, know no, that. it's attached to that one. It's supposed to be parallel to the one one over. Wait, but it's attached to these two. No, no, you, no, your OH is right. I'm talking about your other oh. carbon right now. Oh. Your, your your ethyl group is oh, drawn wrong. wrong. Yeah, it's just the wrong parallel. It needs to kind of go up to, to the like it's parallel to the wrong. It's parallel to a bond that is attached to that same carbon. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be like that. Exactly. Okay. Perfect. 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 And it might seem like I'm picking at you for detail, and I kind of am, but it's also important. I okay, guess. so if you yes. gave us. If we were, if you gave us this example without my red, how I initially drawn it, it was, it would be wrong. It would be wrong. Okay. You're not drawing, like that's why I think the lead off for one of my last lecture, I think the last lecture, I drew a six member ring with all of the angles of the bonds. It's like slide one of the last lecture I gave. Mm -hmm. And okay. the, the angles are, if you're drawing a chair that way, that is where the angles are. You can't move those bonds around. They, they're they fixed because they're tetrahedra. You can't do anything to it. Okay. Because what you're drawing are not tetrahedra, and then I, I get sad. I think it's probably the best word. Cool. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to draw... I'm going to let Madison ask something quick if she's got something or if she's just. Yeah, that was that was my last question, but yeah, she okay. can go ahead. Sorry, just running out of time. Uh, mine is really just to go over um, how to determine like the. Charge density of a structure for a hybrid. That's. Yeah, if that makes sense when you're like, oh, this yeah, is. No, I understand exactly what you mean, and I'm trying to think how can I do this relatively quickly in a meaningful way. Um, <laughs> Oh yeah, because this is end at ten o'clock. Yeah, so oh, I'll sure. go a little bit over because why not? But I'm actually just making sure I'm not trying to run off somewhere else at ten. No, I'm good. I didn't do something not stupid. Put myself into something immediately afterwards. This. Yeah. Okay. About till ten fifteen. Okay. Um. So let's say we had, you know. Let's say we had a molecule like this. And so what you're asking is how do I determine the charge density of the resonance hybrid, right? Yes, because that I just lost. 
Yeah, like okay. how you know, oh, this oxygen would be in the way that you draw the different sizes of the charge too. Okay, so let's let's walk through this. So, Matt, um, how about you take a few minutes, Madison, and try and draw if the other, if the rest of you want to do this too, and try and draw the resonance structures of this, like draw the arrows and draw the resonance structures. I'll give you I don't know about a minute. I'd say there are, uh, including this one, three good resonance structures. So here, do we basically use the same rules as in like the acid stability ones, but because we're dealing with basically the same molecule, we like get rid of the resonance rules, the induction rule. The induction uh, still plays a role because it might help with where the electrons are. And I can complicate that and actually do that and we can do a quick example. After. No, I'll do it. Maybe I'll pull if we have time, I'll do another example in class maybe with that. Um, okay with just induction, but induction's always there. It's just we're not going to be considering relative. We're not going to be considering which of these molecules has better resonance because we're comparing resonance structures within a molecule. Yeah, but ev then everything else matters. It's just okay. resonance doesn't matter. Okay, okay, so I don't know uh, any lack of that. It's not getting these. Do you think you got them? To be honest, I'm quite slow, but I'm on my third one right now. <laughs> okay. It's okay, you'll get faster. Get lots of practice. So hopefully this is what you guys have. If you want, we can keep track of the lone pairs. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. OK, so the reason these are the three best is because there are other resonance structures you can draw, but they either create more than one charge. You'll have them with three charges present, in which case that's not ideal. I'm just going to have to plug in before my screen dies. Um, so one with three charges is never going to be meaningful if you can get other ones with one charge. Or you're sticking electropositive at, well, I, I think you'd be doing this with three charges as well. You'd be sticking positives on electronegative atoms, um, which would suck. So these are the three you should have. So now what we want to do is we want to rank the three. And in all cases, again, uh, as I think it was it was one of you guys saying um, we don't need to worry about the resonance anymore because all these have the same resonance because they are resonance structures of each other. So resonant goes out the window. Um, if there's some crazy ass induction on one of these and everything else is equal, we can consider induction. Um, but what we have here are three examples, three cases where the charge is on different atoms. And so what we should be asking ourselves here is where does this charge most want to be? Which atom stabilizes this charge greatest of these three atoms? So asking that question. So sulfur. Yeah. Okay. So let's just put a big number one here. Which one's number? Which one's next best? Oxygen. Yeah. And by elimination, carbon. Right. Yeah. So what we're saying with this ranking is, I'm saying most of the negative charge is sitting on the sulfur because sulfur stabilizes it best. The second biggest locus of negative charges on the oxygen, not as good as sulfur, still pretty good. The third biggest locus of negative charges on a carbon, uh, not gonna carry very much, but 
any delocalization is always good. Sharing is always caring. So if we're drawing the resonance hybrid, the way we do that, again, draw the bonds that never break, uh, which in this case is just the single bonds. Draw dotted lines wherever there is a double bond in any of the meaningful resonance structures, in which case freaking everywhere. There is a negative charge outside the bracket. This bracket says this is not a valid Lewis structure, and it's not. I've just drawn some dotted lines. It is not a valid Lewis structure. Um, I'm also because I'm not drawing distinct bonds like, hey, this these electrons are here. They are always here. That's what Lewis structures say. This isn't saying that this saying the electrons are kind of everywhere. And then I'm going to draw the biggest delta minus at the sulfur because I just said the sulfur stabilizes the negative charge best. I'm going to draw an intermediate delta minus at the oxygen because it's kind of in between and a small delta minus at the carbon. OK, that makes a bit more sense now. OK, you know what? Uh, I've got a few minutes. Let's try uh, another example where we're just going to. Um... Quick question, just because I want to see if my thought process for that was correct. So the reason why sulfur was number one was because it has a bigger radii, atomic radii than oxygen, which means it wants to dis um, distribute the electron charges, correct? And so yeah. oxygen would be the second. Well, also because it's the second most electronegative. And then it would be carbon. Yeah, so we're okay. comparing. So with these, we're looking at these and we're going, what's the difference? I've got carbon, oxygen, sulfur. OK, oxygen and sulfur are more. Oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. Carbon is obviously the worst, like if I'm going along the row, but oxygen and sulfur are in, are in the same column. So going along the row doesn't help me there. So going down the column, sulfur is bigger. It stabilizes negative charge better than oxygen, and oxygen is over from carbon. So yeah, everything you said there was absolutely correct. Okay. I just tried to say what you said again differently, but yes. In a better way. Logic yeah. is absolutely <laughs> perfect. I think actually you said it better than me. So um, let's have another example here. So in this case, there's only one good, re there's only one other good resonance structure. So what we end up doing is actually pushing three arrows. OK. So. Again, if we're trying to compare resonance structures and draw the resonance hybrid, um, you're only going to consider structures that have. You know what? There might you know what, it will be okay to draw. Maybe there's maybe there's a third one. Uh, sorry, I. So I, I was just about yeah. to ask. No, no, I there's put... a third one. I cheated. I just I went real fast and I got all excited about with the question I was trying to ask, uh, but I will actually draw the third one because you're absolutely right. I was like, can't you do a lone pair on that? OK, yep. gotcha. Yeah, you absolutely can. It just and it's it's correct. I, I'm very sorry. I. I have no defense, except I'm only on my third cup of coffee this morning, and so I need about two or three more before I'm human. You're no, you're absolutely right. There was a perfectly good third one. OK. This is the problem with making up answer uh, questions on the go is. I, you get stupider the closer to the board you are. And I am very close to my tablet. OK, so we have. Um, we have these three structures, red, green and purple. So. 
let's let's do the easy one. Which is the worst resonance structure? Red. This. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's I'm on just carbon. The second one, yeah. It's gonna suck. Um, I should have checked to see if anyone was red, green, colorblind. Then, the, okay, of the bottom and the top one, in both cases. In the last case, we were able to say, okay, it's on this atom, fine, we're easy. <coughs> Here, though, it's, a, it's on auction in both cases. So the atom doesn't help you. And you can't use resonance to get you out of this because uh, we're comparing resonance structures. So the only things that are left, because you can't use down a row or up the column with the same atom, you can't use resonance, that leaves us with the inductive effects and conjugation. Uh, or um, uh, hybridization. In both cases, the electron has to be in a p orbital, like the lone pair has to be in a p orbital to do resonance. So they're both in p orbitals, so that doesn't help us. So do we have a difference in induction effects? Yes. Okay. The first one because of fluorine. Yeah. And so it's fluorine the negative charge. Right? Pardon? I didn't hear that last part. It's the, the fluorine is closer to the negative charge in the first one than in the third one. Like the fluorine is there in both of them. It's just, but it's much, but it's right here and negative charge is there versus right here and negative charge is over there, right? Correct. So we like having induc induction as a function of distance and strength. And here, the, the, the strength is the same. It's the same group. It's CF3 in both cases, but the distance matters. So this one is better because it is closer. So it is able to better delocalize that negative charge. Am I making sense? Yes. Sweet. Yes. It's a good day. I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, for induction, which one matters more, strength or distance? Yes. <laughs> Both. Like, if, you Both. Were, if you had Both. an atom that was closer but less an electronegative, then one would, that was farther. So what I'm going to say is it depends. Let's say you had a CF3 group versus a CBR3 group. Um, or your CI3, let's go with iodine because it's, it's weaker than bromine, and the CF3 group was one carbon further away, it would probably be better than the CI3 group. Mm -hmm. But if you had a CF3 group and a CCL3 group, and the fluorine was one carbon further away, the chlorine is, the, is the, the gap in withdrawing potential between fluorine and chlorine is much smaller, and so the chlorine would win. Even So it de depends, it, it's, it's a balance. Um, I promise I am not going to screw you on an exam with a borderline case like that. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going. I'm not going to uh, ask you to compare uh, weigh strength versus distance on an exam. In reality, you have to weigh strength versus distance. Mm -hmm. But on an evaluation, that is an unfair question. I think. Um, so my answer is both. They both matter, and it's a case by case thing. Um, and there are times when I can't tell. I, you know, I have to kind of do the measurement. And I'm not going to put you in a situation where I can't tell. Because that's not fair. And it doesn't test your understanding of the material. It just tests. I don't know what that tests. It tests if you're lucky or not. And that's not something I want to evaluate. OK, so again, we should have a fully dotted line in between everything here in our resonance structure. Overall negative charge on our resonance structure. Um, I, I would accept two answers to this uh, that would, I would consider equally correct. I, no matter what, big negative, smaller negative, little negative. Again, just following a ranking. But I would accept also if somebody put a small negative out on the fluorines because of the inductive effect of the fluorines. So the blue one is optional. If it's there, full marks. If it's not there, full marks.
sorry, quick question. Um, my thought process at first was put a like a medium sized charge near that flooring. Instead of the small one, I put like something bigger than what I drew. Yeah, I'd accept so, that. Okay. I'd accept that. I, I think that's fine. I, 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 to be honest, I wasn't even thinking about putting a big charge next to that oxygen, but it does make sense because. Yeah, no, I, I'd accept. I'd accept a. I accept a medium. I, I. I'm leaving that. That could be any size. That blue. It's probably not as big as the biggest oxygen for sure. I'd actually have to get out. Um, I'd actually have to calculate the molecular orbital on this to determine the charge just uh, charge localization. It's probably pretty big on the flooring. I, I'd accept a medium. I think that's probably more correct than what I drew there. And sorry, just one more time. Can you explain why that one on the the oxygen on the right has the biggest one? It's because it has it can take. Okay, my reasoning is going to be dumb and probably not a scientific way of saying it. But what I'm thinking is it can take the most electron charge, electric charge. I mean, I don't know. Never yeah, mind. I, I, no, no, I, you're absolutely right. Uh, more negative charge over there because more of it can be sucked by the fluorine. Like it can handle a bigger percentage of the charge than the other oxygen because it's got the fluorine helping it out. Okay. Yep, that's a better explanation. It makes more sense. Thank you. What's exactly what you said? Just with other words, but your your logic is good. You're you're thinking about this correctly. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Did that help at all, Madison? These two examples. Yes, yes, it did. I, I know it doesn't solve your problems. And <laughs> like, yeah, I'm covering this entire subject in two examples. Um, but this, no, this is the kind of thought you should be following through. Okay, um, thanks guys. I'm going to call it a day because we're 15 minutes over and I'm going to post. I This is recorded, so I'm going to post this. Um, thanks. I really appreciate you guys participating and everyone else is going to benefit from. Well, you know what? Let's be honest. No one's going to watch it, but everyone else would benefit from this. Okay, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Sure. Um, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Do you. Thank you. Would you happen to have those uh, just like like an idea of a textbook or something. I'm going to post an announcement the name of some textbooks that might be useful. OK, OK, perfect. I was able to find PDFs relatively easily on library Genesis. OK, well, I'll just I'll just look them up or then. Or things, yes. So I'll post names of other textbooks that could be useful. And okay. just make a comment on how one should acquire those textbooks. OK, oh, thank you so much. No worries. Bye. 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 Have a great day. You too.